Thanks, Bob. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to get through this. I'll just do the best I can. First of all, I'd like the media in general to please give Terry and the children a break. I realise that you've got a job to do and it's extremely hard for Terry and the children. The other thing I'd like to say is I'd like to thank all the people for the wonderful tributes that have come in and it's just absolutely amazing. This may sound really, really weird, but at the moment that I heard the news, I was about to bury a cow that had died calving. Things were happening at the same time. Is there any plans for, or, or do, you, do you think it's appropriate that Steve be buried here, or are there other plans that the family have as to where you may be buried? We haven't gone that far. I, I, Bob hasn't been involved in that at this point. This is his first time to the zoo since it's the tragedy, so we haven't had a chance to have five minutes. We've just taken a couple of minutes, which is why we're running late now, but no discussions. That will be, that will be Terry's decision anyway. Uh, Terry's... Terry's holding up very well, considering. She's extremely concerned for her children, Bindi and Robert, obviously. And that's the reason I asked the media to please give them a little bit of a break for the children's sake. Well, I guess a lot of people here seem to think that Steve was invincible. As his dad, was that something you felt in your heart as well? No. No. Over the years, Steve and I have had a lot of adventures together and there's been many occasions when anything could have gone wrong and Steve knew the risks involved with the type of work he was doing and he wouldn't have wanted it any other way. There's, there's never been anybody else that I know of that had the personality that Steve had and the strength and the conviction of what he believed in and his message was conservation and and he was such a strong person that um, people all over the world believed in him certainly certainly if if I, I retired from the zoo many years ago I still do conservation work on the property and um, I'm going to help Terry wherever I can to carry on his conservation work. Bob, well, well, how would you like Steve to be? Just as he was. He, he, he was an ordinary guy. He, he, was, he, was just, he was just like a guy in the street. And, and um, he just had this ability to get through to people. Weren't like father and son. We never were. We were good mates. How, how would you like him to be remembered? Well, I'll, I'll remember Steve as my best mate ever. What do you think he would have made of all this? I got a couple of smart answers, but I'll keep them to myself. <laughs> oh, but um, <laughs> I'm not sure, actually. I, I, I can't honestly answer that question. I this this is the first media interview that I've ever given for many years, and it's it's not something I enjoy. But I owe it to Steve to do it. And I also owe it to Terry and the children to do it. Involved with 
with reptiles generally when he was little. Um, it was just a gradual process and that's when the mateship started, right back when he was six, seven, eight years old. We used to go out in the bush and not do anything in particular, just go out in the bush. And, and it was it, it was something I'll never forget. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. He, he was he was an amazing man in that he 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 had the strength to be able to do what he did. Honesty. What did you try to teach him throughout his life? Honesty. I I told him as as Australia Zoo grew and as the the filming scene with Johnny grew I said to him whatever you do wherever you are you will be honest with whoever it is and he was No, he's a mate. He's a buddy. He's a guy I could go out. He'd, he'd come up to the property. And we'd wander off and we'd maybe have a barbecue. Maybe we'd just wander off in the scrub, light a fire. I'd have a couple of smokes because I'm a criminal, I smoke. And um, we might sit around the fire talking for hours on end about nothing really and, and it was just so enjoyable and, and and I'm a lucky I'm a lucky lucky guy that well, I've had the opportunity to have a son like Steve do you think this is something you will recover from? I I have to recover because Steve will want his work carried on and I might be able to fill in until Bindi and Robert are old enough to take over. Just another two questions, guys, and that'll finish it. Two more questions. Doc, Mark said that in spite of the popularity, Steve was never chasing a great deal of um, publicity, and yet he's been offered a state funeral. How do you think he would react to this offer? The state funeral would be re refused. Because he's an ordinary guy. He's just an ordinary bloke. He, he, and he wants to be remembered as an ordinary bloke. And do you think that wish will be carried to the family? Yes. One more question. Yeah, last question. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. Yes. Well, well, what can you say? I mean, all I can do is, is, is thank them sin sincerely for their thoughts and their wishes. And, and I'd also like to thank you people for um, not making it too hard for me. And um, I'd also like to say that maybe in a few days we can have another chat. Thank That's you. Good. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. A clearly emotional Bob Irwin, a huge effort for him remembering his son Steve and thanking Australians for their kind words and wonderful tributes after his tragic death. The funeral details are yet to be confirmed by Steve's wife Terry who has requested privacy for the sake of their two young children, although Bob did hint that there would be no state funeral. And we'll have more news at 4.30.